Hi, I'm Michael Azarad, Editor-in-Chief of The Talk House, and welcome to The Talk House Music Podcast. You're listening to New Gravity from Science and Magic, the upcoming debut album by Lil Bub. Lil Bub is a tiny, very special cat who has been an internet star since 2011, when her dude, recording studio owner Mike Bradovsky, posted some photos of her on Tumblr. Her Facebook page currently has over 2.3 million likes. She's been the subject of an award-winning documentary. She's the author of Lil Bub's Lil Book, The Extraordinary Life of the Most Amazing Cat on the Planet, and she hosts Lil Bub's Big Show, a web-based talk show that has featured guests including wonderful people like Whoopi Goldberg, Kelly Deal from The Breeders, and Steve Albini. Bub is a rescue cat and has several genetic mutations. She's actually the subject of a scientific investigation into their cause, which involves sequencing her genome. As a rescue cat with special needs, Bub works to spread awareness about adoption and proper animal care. 25% of the net proceeds from the sales of Science and Magic benefit Lil Bub's Big Fund for the ASPCA, a national fund for special needs pets, which has raised over $200,000 for animals in need. There was always originally composed music in Lil Bub videos, and due to popular demand, there is now Science and Magic, out December 4, 2015, on Joyful Noise. The music was composed by Brodovsky's close friend, bandmate, and official Bubby sitter, Matt Toby, and produced by Brodovsky. But the whole thing was guided by Bub, whom big time fan Andrew WK recently described as the most musically gifted creature he has ever met. Bub's conversation partner here is her fellow musician, John Worster, who plays drums, brilliantly, for Superchunk, Mountain Goats, Bob Mould, and whoever else is lucky enough to have him. With Tom Sharpling, John is also one half of the team that does The Best Show, one of the funniest things you can listen to. And he's also a big time animal lover. So we thought we'd put these two together so they could have a conversation about Bub's new album, her intergalactic origins, and pooping on expensive comforters. Bub also has a few probing questions for John, and he answers them as honestly as he can. These two do have a few tense moments, but they're both nice folks, so they patch it up nicely. And this podcast features what just might be John's debut recording as a solo singer. A word to parents, this conversation does include a rather off-color anecdote involving members of a certain very popular rock group, so you might want to play the kids the G-rated version of this podcast. And without further ado, Here's Lil Bub and John Worster for the Talk House Music Podcast. Hello, this is John Worster. I'm here at Overdub Studios in Durham, North Carolina, where I have the great pleasure of interviewing Lil Bub, the world's most famous cat, as far as I'm concerned. How are you, Lil Bub? You're okay? Well, good. We're gonna ease. We're gonna ease into this, okay? This should be painless. But I know, I know you have a lot to say, and we're gonna try to cover as much ground as possible about your very exciting new album, Science and Magic. But first of all, I want to also introduce Mike Bradovsky, who is pretty much your dude. Mike, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. How was the drive here? Uh, not bad. Good. I drove from Raleigh. I didn't realize how far Raleigh was from Durham. It's kind of far. Kind of. It's a whole yeah. different world over here. I should say that the studio we're in right now over Dub Lane is, is sort of uh, a, a big part of my life. Uh, I, we have done the last, I think, three Mountain Goats records here and the last two Super Chunk albums here. It's a cool place. Very cool. So. And unassuming. It is unassuming. Um... Well, let's let's dive right into this. Mike, where did you find Lil Bub, or where did Lil Bub find you? Uh, that's a good question. Um, Bub was found by my very good friends, girlfriends, sisters, roommates, boyfriends, mom, in a tool shed in her backyard in rural Indiana. She was uh, one of three feral kittens in a litter, and um, so basically the short story is that she found these kittens. She noticed the Bub was a little different, bottle fed her, and then they tried to find her home. So my friend sent me a text message of Bub as a half-pound kitten and said, um, 
you have to meet this cat. I think that you guys are perfect for each other. I had four other rescue cats at the time, still do. And um, so I came over. We uh, instantly became the best friends um, in the world. I took her home, and then the rest is history. Little Bub is sitting on your lap right now, l- looking like that's where she belongs. Feels very comfortable there. It is where you belong. I know. I can tell. Now, Little Bub has gone on to an astounding career, a huge media presence, uh, a published au- authoress. Auth- auth- I think S author. is diminutive, so she likes okay. to go with author. That's, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, Lil Bub has her own TV show. Very exciting. Yeah, she's uh, she has a talk show on the on the internet. Isn't that right, Bub? And um, she also had a special on Animal, Pla- uh, Animal Planet, Little Bub Special Special, which starred um, well, Little Bub, of course, and Andrew WK. Oh yeah, and Amy Sedaris, of course. Sorry, I almost Ooh. forgot. Yes. Little Bub, who was your favorite guest on on your show? I know you you had uh, Whoopi Goldberg on. You had the First Lady Michelle Obama, Steve Albini, Kelly Deal. Who, who's your favorite? <coughs> Sue the T Rex skeleton. I'm not even sure I know Sue the T Rex skeleton. What's what's her story? <coughs> you fell in love with her. <coughs> so does that mean you guys are seeing each other? Uh, I understand you can't talk about it, but uh, is, is there a special animal in your life at this point? I see. You are your own special animal. I, I, I get that. I, I kind of roll like that, too. Um, now, little Bub, let's talk about science and magic. It's, it's very exciting. This is your first album. And um, c- could you talk a little bit about how you came up with the idea to make this album. It's, it's a very special album. You've been working on it for millions of years. I don't think I knew you were that old. I thought you were like two. Have I ever heard of time? Of course I've heard of time. You're older than time. Oh my God. Well, that explains the, 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 the epic scope of, of science and magic. It, it's a very impressive... Uh, Work. It, it almost reminds me of, of Yes's Tales of Topographic Oceans in, in its scope. I was wondering if, if that was any influence on, on your, your music. Oh, yeah, it's, it's a lot like R- Rush's Tom Sawyer as, as well. Um, w- would it be safe to, to describe you as, as a prog cat? She's a progressive cat. I, I, sure. I get it. I, I totally get it. Um, now, Lil Bub... I know you are from Bloomington, Indiana. Is that correct? Which is, of course, the hometown of John Mellencamp. <laughs> I'm sorry, John Mellencat. <laughs> um, but it's also, I didn't know this, it's also the birthplace of David Lee Roth. He is great. Now, I'm curious, which of the two has had the the bigger impact on... Both your music and your lifestyle. Neither. I I see. To you, they're they're both mere mortals. But uh, I I get that. I guess. Yeah. And um. So let's talk about the the album. Like I said, there's a lot of stuff going on in there. There. It, it sounds like there's a little bit of L- LCD sound system. Is 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 that is that true enough? Oh man, um, you know I would say Bub Bub's only musical references are literally Tom Sawyer by Rush. That's it, really. Yeah, and it drives me crazy. I hate that song. Well, I used to kind of like it, but she listens to it. You probably endlessly. hear it all the time. Yeah, and and I don't think it was a. I truly, and I'm speaking for Bub here. Bub, sure. correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. That means I'm I'm right. I'm a, that I'm means a, you're right. Yes, but um, I think that science and magic is more influenced by um, sort of uh, the energy of the universe. Sure. In a way, and um, it's the, like these um, sort of powerful signals that she uh, gives off to to the the creative folk that were responsible for the record, which is um, her original Bubby Sitter, Matt Toby, and, and myself. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but as far as her musical tastes go, like I said, it's kind of sad. It's just, it's just Tom Sawyer. So nothing else. She doesn't even like any other Rush songs. I, it, I don't know. It, it might be, maybe there's some secret message that she can decode from the notes of Tom Sawyer. So if I was to play We Are the Priest from the Temple of Syrinx, she, she would have no interest in it. She has no idea what that or is. Or Time Stands Still. No. Hmm. But although she, I mean, she, I think she likes the concept of time standing still. Right, right. And so the writing process for this record and, and, and the recording process, how did that work? That's right. Um, well, if you ask Bub, like she just said, it kind of, um, she, send, she, she sends these ideas to us, but we don't realize that that's what's happening when I say simply, oh, I've got this video, I need a song for it, um, because YouTube doesn't let you, you know, you have to use original music. Sure. Um, and I don't know, I have this idea to ask Matt. And Matt, can you write a, a, a little song for this video, just keep Bub in mind? And he says, oh, I'm so busy, I'm so busy, um, and uh, but I'll give it a shot. And next thing I know, the next morning, he sends me a song. He's like, oh, man, that was super fun. It was super easy to do. And this is this is a guy who was faced with um, writer's block. I'm sure we've oh. all experienced that. Sure. And in a way, it's like Bub cured this writer's block for him because he could not stop writing these uh, little ditties on his like laptop using GarageBand or whatever, little electronic sounds. And, um, and, and then... So he made a few songs for us, and Bob and I liked them so much. Yeah, <laughs> and um, that uh, we wanted more. And then Matt, who's also my bandmate, said, uh, "Well, we went we went on a tour in Japan, and I paid for his plane ticket." And then he owed me for this plane ticket. Okay. <laughs> and uh, and plane tickets to Japan are expensive. Yeah. And I was like, "Man, can you pay me back?" He's like, "No, but what if I just wrote an entire library of." bub music right for you and so he did that and that's what i use in bub videos all the charming tunes that you hear in bub videos are, were written by matt for bub and to answer your question i truly believe that bub sort of hired us to make these songs with her in mind and in a way that these are her compositions and we are so to speak her creative vessels so so it, it's almost like little bub is is flowing the ideas to you guys and your your kind of channels for, for the music is that safe to say i think it's safe to say i mean you know it's it couldn't be just anyone sure you know she checked out matt's resume my resume right. and she was like these guys have what it takes right to combine science and magic she could have picked alex lifeson from rush to to do this she way. could she could have picked david lee roth i mean right they yeah. both crashed their spaceships into the same town. It's true. Yeah. Now, little bub, I know when I'm trying to come up with an idea, e e either musically or or, or 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 for the best show, I'll sometimes get stuck and I'll have to go and, you know, take a walk or something or go to the store or, you know, go to my favorite Indian restaurant to kind of, you know, uh, oh, I can call you and you can help me out. Oh my God, I love that. Well, I, I was curious, when you get stuck, if you ever do get stuck, do you just kind of walk around and go, I got to play with a, a ball of string for like 10 minutes? You meditate. What do you, like, what uh, What do you meditate on? Do you just kind of observe your thoughts or do you actually have a, have like a, 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 a thing you focus upon? I see. You focus on the alignment of the planets from your original solar system. What what's that solar system called? And do do many Earthlings know about it? Blah blah blob. I, I've never heard of that solar system. Where is it? Uh, is it widely known and discussed? Very far away. I see. Wait, I, I'm the only one that knows about it. Well, Bob, not, not anymore. He's not. Now everyone knows about it. I, I got scared for a second because that, that's a lot of responsibility for, for... I'm just like a drummer 
in a rock band. I, I, I don't know if I could handle that sort of responsibility. Oh, you love drummers there? That's so nice. There's so, lots of drummers there. So if I was to, to, to go to that solar system, would I be treated as some sort of god? You don't have gods. You, you have drummers. So, but I could get like a better parking space than, than like a, a mere cubicle zero. That's great. Wow. Awesome. Little bub, where do the song titles from your on your album come from? Like, just some of the titles. Hello, Earth. Obviously, that that is kind of self-explanatory, right? I see. So it's the album is it's a concept album that basically describes your descent to Earth and your adventures here. Um, I know uh, there's a song on it called Assimilation. How, how hard has it been for you to, to assimilate into our way of doing things on Earth? You're telling me this place is pretty messed up, and it's, I, I imagine it's pretty tough for you. Um, are, there any, are there any political leaders that you like? Ooh, hell no. That was a, that was a pretty harsh harsh response um but yeah to to add something to what bub was saying in regards to the song titles yes um it, it is it's like a concept album so hello earth is her descent to yeah. earth she obviously lands on a beach yeah if you've heard the song and then um the next song is called new gravity and um because for bub it is new gravity if you've ever seen a bub video you see that she has a hard time moving around um, and she she rides really low to the ground and that's because on on her planet in her solar system of blah 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 and on her planet of bub 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 um, the gravity is they just float around there so they don't really need to move around so new gravity and she needs to get used to the politics and all the weird names of the politicians yeah. and baseball players and um, and yeah and then she finds me and then you know she finds out that people really love her here they do and we do now um the song good job what's that about that's right yeah uh-huh yeah so it well basically it it, it celebrates the moment when um when bub uh, two things when bub found a cure for her uh Bone condition. Right. So, and what is that condition? What's it called? It's called osteopetrosis, and um, it's exceptionally rare. Bub is, as far as we know, well, as far as we know, the only cat in recorded history to have been born with it. And um, there are actually geneticists in um, in Germany that are studying her DNA and trying to figure out uh, all that stuff, which is interesting in itself. Uh, also a combination of science and magic. But um, good job. Yeah, so... She was almost immobile because she was completely immobile. And then through her fame, and this is this is true, and the way that she has survived, because she doesn't have teeth, she can't really move around. So in the wild, she would be helpless. But her mode of survival was to find me at a time when cats were popular on the Internet and even that the Internet existed. And her looks and her energy are what um, are her special tools and are what got her um, known by the world and increased her chances of finding a cure on our planet for her bone condition. And sure enough, when things were the worst they could have been with her and, and I was not sure what to do because she was not happy at the time, a fan um, sent us a message saying you should try. And at this point, I tried Reiki, which had helped somewhat, all kinds of things. Um, specialists said that uh, really nothing to do, no, nothing to be done. And then uh, this 
fan suggested a, a device that has literally saved her life. And um, so that song, Good Job, which happens right in the middle of the record, is a celebration of her her, her finding this treatment and being able to uh, continue her work on Earth. And what exactly is her work? It's a good question. It's something that I am constantly um, learning and trying to figure out you know from the beginning especially when I first found her I knew that she was special I was sure she was the most amazing creature on the planet and this is obviously before I had any idea she would be so wildly famous and inspirational to people all over the world um, but you know it's been over three years since she got famous and it's becoming much more clear um, her overall mission is she just has an overall message of positivity and um, determination. Mm -hmm. And it's it's kind of crazy how, how much joy she brings to the world on so many levels. Obviously, there's just the message of awareness about pet, pet and animal care and um, adoption, spaying and neutering your pets. Like the stuff that a lot of people in my circles, you know, is common sense sure. and everyone knows, but... Once you once your cat's famous on the internet, you find out how many people don't understand that. Think that declawing your cat's okay, right. which it's not. People don't declaw your cat, um, and so that's how it all started. And then you know, people were asking for shirts and stuff. And in fact, we had a T-shirt design before she was famous as an inside joke with our friends, right. um, because my friend David, who still designs a lot of the Bub merchandise. He had a shirt of his own cat, Smoosh, who was a local celebrity. And then I had Bub, and we were like, oh, man, we should make up the story that Bub and Smoosh are boyfriend-girlfriend and make a shirt. And then Bub got famous after the shirt was designed. And then the shirt took off. And then so when people were buying these shirts, I was like, well, this is weird. I, I never anticipated this. So it just made sense to donate a portion of that to our local charity. But as things grew and people kept – and it became a national thing, and the online store became a real thing, it wasn't fair anymore for me to arbitrarily pick where this money is going because these people are supporting our, our mission. And so we started Little Bub's Big Fund for the ASPCA. It's a national, national fund and uh, the first of its kind for special needs pets. And so now the money goes into this fund, and the ASPCA very generously um, manages it, and shelters from all over the world can apply for these grants. And we have... We have raised, we just exceeded $200,000 in less than two years. Wow, that's great. Most of that is honestly from our appearances, sure. which um, where all, all the proceeds from our appearances just go towards the fund and to the organi organization hosting us. In fact, Safe Haven Cats here mm -hmm. in um, the Raleigh-Durham area was one of the first recipients of our grants, and we're actually going there right after this. Awesome. That's so nice. That's so great. So will there be, I know you're doing personal appearances now and, and uh, uh, appearances to raise awareness, but will there be a music tour, like a, like a tour? Yeah, that's right, Bub. We are, we're going to do, well, we're going to start with a record signing tour, which sort of is really cool for us and Matt, who wrote the music, and myself, who produced the record, and Bub, of course, because it's a, we're combining, you know, our experience as band guys and music lovers with the experience of Bub, and we're doing, we're going to be signing records at record stores all over the country. We'll be announcing that tour soon. And then beyond that, we're talking about getting so this is a studio album, right? And uh, but we are putting together a group to actually perform the music, and this is still in the works, but we're hoping to get um, animators and video folks mm -hmm. e from all over the country or maybe the world, whoever wants to do it, to create a video for each song on the album. And then what we'll do is play the record along with screening all these videos, which I think will be a cool experience because I don't think we'd be able to take Bub on a rock and roll tour. It's not the best environment right. for her. She could wear those those tiny little headphones. Oh, man, that would be awesome. imagine how cute that would be? Yeah. We She's could put so her in like a little space pod, like a soundproof space yeah. pod. I bet you'd like that. I think we'd all love to see you on stage, but but your ears are precious cargo and they can't be damaged very fragile yes
Well, Bub, rock and roll is, p- pun intended, littered with feline performers. From the Stray Cats to Def Leppard to the Polecats, White Lion, Cat Power. That's right, John, John Cougar Mellencamp. His, his, his original name was John Johnny Cougar. That's right. But, of course, the big daddy of all cat rockers is Kiss drummer Peter Chris, right? Well, little Bob, a couple years ago, Peter Chris wrote a tell-all that I would put up against Motley Crue's The Dirt in terms of just the most salacious, just naughty, naughty stuff. And I don't use the word naughty ever because I hate it so much, but I just used it. What's naughty? Naughty is like, uh, you know, kind of dirty, you know. So, little bub, I wanted to read you a, a, a passage from Peter Chris's book, uh, Make Up to Break Up. Is that okay? All right, this is about, uh, I, I believe it, it, it was the first Kiss tour. And so the band, I, I think, is in, uh, they're in San Francisco. A few nights into the tour, we got a chance to pull our first prank. Gene had picked up a chick, and they were in his room. I was rooming with Gene then, so I went to Paul and Ace's room. Let's bust Gene's balls. He's got a chick in the room, I said. I'm going to get naked and tie a red ribbon around my neck and my cock and put my balls in a champagne glass and serve it to them. Hold on, what? What? No, he didn't have a chicken. He, he had a chick. That's, that's, what, that's what terrible men on earth call women. Oh, no, no, no. A, a cock, well, a, a cock is a male chicken. But in, in this case, the cock is, it, well, you've seen Mike naked, right? I, yes. Well, of course you have. Well, you know, it's that thing that's kind of in the middle of Mike. I know. I'm look. I'm. I. I. I maybe I shouldn't even even gone here. But but. Uh, I. It, I. Just, okay. I'll, I'll go on. I have a little more here. To my surprise, Paul wanted to join me in my prank, and he had a set of balls like a fucking elephant's. Anyway, he had a set of balls like a fucking elephant's. So we tied the ribbons and put our balls in two champagne glasses, and I slowly opened the door to the room. Gene quickly turned on the lamp, and there was Paul and me with our balls in the champagne glasses. Would you or your your girl care for a drink, I said? Gene looked over at us and then pushed us out and slammed the door behind us. Anyway, I brought that up because... I wanted to know, and Mike, maybe you could you could answer this. Since Lil Bub has has become famous, has she pulled any kind of like, you know, d- classic rock and roll diva behavior or or pranks of not of that sick nature, but but is is she you know is she kind of acting up a little bit? Well, this is that's a good question, and what's funny too is is this wasn't planned, but she does have one of the most incredible diva rock star stories ever but it's not really a diva rock star story it's actually bub literally turns shit into wine oh i want to hear about this so can i tell the story bub you sure okay yep well uh here we go so i don't think i've ever told this story you know like uh um publicly so this is this is cool um Basically, we are in New York City. We're staying at the Dream Hotel. I don't oh, know. Oh yes, you know, I know the Dream. Yeah. yeah, it's where Lindsay Lohan, I think, got like arrested for doing naughty things. Naughty things. Maybe yes. she put her balls in a glass of champagne. I don't know. Um, but so we're. Oh yeah, hey bub. So we're at the Dream Hotel, and uh, if you've ever been there, it's not <laughs> not the kind of place I'm used to being at. But it's kind of wild, and there's like six beautiful. Russian ladies behind the check-in counter, and uh, it's really over the top. But we're there for work, and we're shooting Little Bub's special special for Animal Planet. 
And so uh, we get back after a day of shooting, and I put Bub on this giant, super soft comforter on the bed. I'm like, Bub, you deserve this. Why don't you just lay down? I go downstairs for a drink with my friend Mark, uh, who was helping me with the, with the show. He was directing it. And then uh, I come back up maybe a half hour later to discover that Bub has diarrhea all over the comforter. Oh, no. Oh, Bub. It happens. I have to put stool softener in her in her food so that she number twos. She has hard stools. That's just don't what. we all. <laughs> um, so, anyways, I put I must have put a little too much laxative in her food. No big deal. It's all right. So I call downstairs. I fold up the comforter, which I found out later was a two thousand dollar comforter, and um, I call downstairs. And the Russian lady says, "Hello, uh, how can I help you?" And I say, well, uh, I'm very sorry, but there's been an accident. Um, so I need a new comforter. So a half hour later, they pick up the comforter, apparently. And a uh, half hour later, I get a call from a very angry Russian lady. And she says, excuse me, sir, do you have animal in your room? And I say, well, yeah, of course. I'm here with my cat, little bub. We're shooting this show. And she says, there's no animals in Dream Hotel. Yeah, I'm coming up immediately. You'll have to pay for comforter, a $2,000 comforter, and then you'll have to sign this and we may have to kick you out, all this stuff. I'm like, dude, it's little bub. Come on. The lady comes upstairs and she has this form and, and then she walks in and I'm holding bub and she looks at bub and she's pissed. I mean, she's ready to kick me out of the hotel and she looks at bub and she has no idea who little bub is, obviously, or else she wouldn't have been so rude to us and she walks in she sees bub and just freezes and goes oh my goodness i do not even like cat but this is very special cat i feel very special energy and i go yeah yeah that's what i was trying to tell you she is a very special cat um this energy is what has brought us here and we're working on this tv show and i and i try to explain to you and, and she got very interested in the story and i told her all about it she was fascinated and um she says i'm so very sorry i really l love your cat i i will be right back with bottle of wine and there you go wow bub turned shit into wine take that jesus that's right the power of bub <coughs> now little bub you didn't drink any of that wine did you <coughs> good now I I did want to bring up a rumor that's been going on, uh, around about you, and I I, uh, I hope this is okay. There's no easy way to ask this, but um, you know, there's been a few articles written recently um, that say at one point you were spending about a thousand dollars a day on pharmaceutical grade catnip. Uh, do you care to address these rumors? <coughs> it's not true. Okay. You don't do the nip. I see. the song Another Voyage on the album. I, I sense a really strong reggae groove going on there. I, I, and, and I want, uh, speaking of rumors, th there was a rumor that uh, reggae bass legend Robbie Shakespeare might have played the bass on that. Is that, is that true? <coughs> it is a rumor. Okay. <coughs> totally untrue. I see. What's your favorite reggae artist? Barry, Barry Sanders is not is not a reggae artist. He's a baseball. No, he's not even a baseball player. Uh, he is just a guy. But aren't we all? Uh, That's true. You are a lady. Um, the song that we mentioned earlier, Assimilation. I I I get a strong craft work kind of kind of vibe from that. And I had a question for you about this. How annoyed would you be if you bought a ticket to one of these craft work shows where they they play a, an album in, in, in its entirety? And you get there and you find out that your tickets are for them playing Electric Cafe in its entirety. 
Cra yes, Kraftwerk with a K. No, Kath now you're confusing me. No, it's Cafe with a C. It's, w it's one of their lesser albums, I, I, I have to say. Well, I don't remember the question either at this point. All right, let's go on to another song. The title track, Science and Magic. Now, there's a song by, by the legendary band from, from San Pedro, the Minutemen. It's called History Lesson Part Two. And in that song, Mike Watt, the bassist who wrote the song, not only says our band could be your life, but he also says that our band is scientist rock. And I wanted to know if you saw science and magic as a continuation of the, the scientist rock tradition. You do? Okay, yes. Oh, so, so you pretty much invented a whole new genre. Scientist and magician rock. It is like awesome, man. I love it. I love it. Now, the, the album is primarily instrumental. And I wanted to know if you foresaw a day when you would write full lyrics for songs. Is that something you, you want to do? You don't have a terrible singing voice. Sing something for me. Like sing, sing, um, sing, sing Tom Sawyer. I'll, I'll start off. Exit the warrior. Wait, no. Uh, exit the warrior. Today's Tom Sawyer. Mean, mean. Bah, 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 bah. That's terrible. It is kind of terrible. Yeah, you might have to be like the Ventures from here on out. <laughs> She's like the adventures. I was wondering if you might have any questions for me, little bub. Uh, uh. Yes. Uh. That's right. No H. It's just J-O-N. Just like John Anderson from Yes. See, we've come full circle in this conversation. Uh. Yes. Uh. Am I from Germany? My, my, my ancestors are. Yes. Uh. Worcester, uh... It, it might be a type of sausage, but m my name actually means, in German, it means sausage maker. And, yeah, and, and our, our family crest, it, it's a shield, and it's got two sausages on it, I swear to God. Yeah, yes, I guess, I guess you could say I am protected by encased meats. I do love to drum. I've been doing it since I was around uh, uh, 10. 10 years old, yes. How old am I? Am I now 15? No, I'm not 15. No, I wish. Because when I was 15, that's when things got really interesting. Well, you know, I, I, I uh, yeah, I, I, I hit puberty and I, I, I found these magazines. We don't have to get into that, seriously. It's very weird. And but they weren't dirty magazines. That's what's, that's what's so weird about it. Have I ever been to Bloomington? Yes, I, I, I was, uh, I've played in Bloomington several times. And uh, uh, Super Chunk made a record there in 1997 with John Plymel, who was manning the board for this very recording. It's very exciting. It is Meta. It's Meta. Well, it could be Meta. It could be Meta. When I was a, a young boy in Philadelphia, there was a local band called Mr. Meta who spelled it M-E-T-A, so I don't know. Why are you grilling me? I don't like it. Bob, John's been nice to you this whole time. I've been so, yeah, I've been so nice, and now it's like you're, you're turning the screws to me because you're, you're, you're more famous, and I don't like it. Very hurtful. Uh. It's okay. I'm sorry I lashed out at you. I just felt insecure and sad. Uh. I do think you look amazing. I mean, think about it. How, how old are you, two? Well, you're much older than that in, you know, in, in the grand scheme of things. You're four. My God, you look two. Hey, I look 15. That's so nice of you. I'll, I'll, I'll be 49 next, next Saturday. <laughs> I know. We can laugh about it, right? It's fun to laugh. What's my favorite thing about you, little bub? It's got to be. Your tongue. 
the way your tongue hangs out. It is, it is very special, and, and I wanted to ask you something else. We talked about Peter Chris earlier. I, I wanted to know if the rumors were also true that Gene Simmons has filed a cease and desist order against you saying that you can no longer have your tongue out because it infringes on his tongue. Okay, let's set it straight. I understand you, you've been around for literally millions of years, yes. I understand. Okay, that makes sense that that would not hold up in, in any kind of court on Earth. N not Gene, not Miley. I, 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 I think you're right. I, I, you've been doing it before Gene Simmons and Miley Cyrus. You have... If, if I was a, uh, a, a, a copyright granter, I, I would grant you the tongue copyright, the tonguey right. if you would play a little word association with me. Okay? Let's do it. Brian Setzer of the Stray Cats. Water. Sparkling water. Interesting. Uh, ben Gibbard from Death Cab for Cutie. Uber. Interesting. Uh, ben Carson. Oh, Ben Carson is, is, is a guy that stabs people. Uh, all right, how about Sting? He is handsome. Um, Glenn Danzig. Mama. Oh, I get it. Like mother. Yes. Uh, all right. How about how about Taylor Swift? She is tall. She's very leggy too. Yeah. Um, James Murphy from uh, LCD Sound System. <laughs> LSD Sound System. I get it. I get it. Uh, James Earl Jones, the voice of CNN. Cats now. Cats now now. Oh, I get it. That that's CNN. Cats now now. Um, how about Daft Punk? No faces. They don't have faces. They wear helmets. That's a great observation. Now, do do you wear a helmet when you when you travel in space? You do, but it's invisible. You're wearing it now. See, I can't see it. Well, I know what invisible means. I sounded con I didn't sound confused, did I? Well, I I don't like I don't like I don't like this thing where you think you're above me. I mean I get it, but I don't like it. Alright, let's let's do this. Let's end this thing on, on a lightning round, okay? Alright, here we go. Wet food or dry? Wet, okay. Did we really go to the moon? We didn't. What do you know about it? Everything. Oh, my God. Did we even go into space? We did. Do you think we'll ever land on Mars like in that movie, The Martian, where Matt Damon plays a college wrestler who's on his way to regionals? We'll miss Mars. What do you mean? We'll overshoot it? Oh, no. What's the next planet over? Mercury? What do you mean you don't know because our solar system is, is so uninteresting? I thought you knew everything. You do, but why don't you care about our solar system? I think this is very rude. It's okay. Let's get back to the lightning round, okay? Here's a, here, here's a really, uh, this is a really, uh, not a tough one, but this is going to be very exciting for everybody. Garfield or Morris? Garfield, interesting. All right. Little bub. Do the Foo Fighters really need three guitarists? You don't think so? Okay, that's, that's fair enough. H how many solos do you need? I don't know. You know, I'm. Uh, that's a good. That's a good question. I think that's that's probably unanswerable in this lifetime. 
I never thought about that. Why, why did they leave off the D in food fighters? I don't know. It's interesting. All right. Fresh Step or Arm & Hammer's Clump & Seal? None of the above. You don't like either of them. You pee on the floor. All right. Now, now here, here's, here's another question. What's the weirdest place you've ever pooped? I think we've already answered that with the uh, the, yeah, the but that wasn't the, the weirdest. Um, where's oh, where's the weirdest place you've ever pooped? That's right, in space. Now, when you poop in space, this this is probably a little too much for our listeners. It does float. I thought I was I was wondering that it floats. Okay, all right. Final question: Why do you guys always curl up in the weirdest, tightest places? Interesting. That's the only question you don't have an answer for. Wow. It is a mystery. It's even a mystery to you. Wow. Yes, little bub? Yes, before this is over, what? Will I hold will, will I hold you? Of course I will. Oh, I think you're great. And I, I want to thank you for sharing this time w- with me. Oh, my God. Oh, she likes you, man. Lil Bub. L- let's write a song, Lil Bub. Lil Bub. You're just a little nub. You have extra f- fingers on your paws. Just the opposite of Tony Iommi. From Black Sabbath, who cut his off in an industrial accident. I don't think he cut him off, did he? I think he, it was... Like on purpose? Not on purpose. Not on purpose. No, of course not. Yeah. Little bub? I understand that you have to be somewhere very soon. You're doing a personal appearance, right? Just like Elvis Costello is doing right now in his book tour. Little bub, I think you're putting me to sleep, too. You're so soft. Yeah, let's take a nap. And that's it for this edition of the TalkHouse Music Podcast. The TalkHouse would like to thank Lil Bub and Mike Berdovsky for literally going the extra mile for this, and John Worcester for being brilliant. And an extra special thanks to TalkHouse Music Podcast producer-engineer Elia Einhorn for going above and beyond. For more TalkHouse Music Podcasts, including a wonderful conversation between John Worcester's super chunk bandmate Mac McCon with country singer-songwriter Laura Cantrell, by all means, visit our SoundCloud page or subscribe to our podcasts on iTunes. And to read smart, notable musicians writing about new music, please do visit thetalkhouse.com music.